Hi there, it's Nicole here today, and I have a card showcasing Pretty Pink Posh dies with Avery L. Stamps and Dies. This is a, a collaboration blog hop, and I have combined these two products, or these two product lines, for this awesome little Woodland Wonders card. To start, I am stamping the images from the Avery L. Woodland Wonders stamp set on smooth white cardstock using some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black ink. I'm going to be doing a little Copic coloring here. You could also use colored pencils, other kinds of markers, all kinds of different things, watercolor if you prefer. That first bunny was just a little light. So I went ahead and stamped it again. I'm gonna be using quite a lot of the images from this stamp set. It is really chock full of all kinds of stamps that you can use to create all kinds of adorable little scenes. Scene cards are some of my very favorite. I am gonna start coloring in everything with Copic markers. I am gonna speed through this a little bit. I wanna leave it in because I know quite a few of you kinda of like to watch the coloring but I am gonna speed it up so you aren't sitting here all day. I'm using about three shades for the leaves. I started out with two, and I kind of think the YG93 and 95 were looking too similar, so I pulled in a little YG97. For the tree trunks, I'm gonna be using a combination of E43 and E44. I'm gonna lay down the lighter color first and then go in with my darker color. I'm really simply just kind of laying that color down. I kind of flattened the tip of the brush and I'm following the shape of the tree. I got out of the lines just a little bit so I'm using the chisel tip of the colorless blender to push that ink back inside the line, at least enough so that it isn't terribly visible. Go ahead and do that for the second tree trunk. And then I'm gonna go in and kind of trace those dark lines and the edge, the left edge of the tree, just kind of pulling in some of that dark color. I'll do that for the second tree as well. Now, I kept the, it just to two shades for the tree trunk. However, I felt like they blended out too much the first time when I went back in with my lighter color. I went over them about two or three times just trying to get them exactly the way I wanted the shading. You could probably go in with a third color or a third shade for this color family and actually get a little bit better um, maybe dimension or something without having to go over it so many times. However, this really worked. I like this color combination for the tree trunks. It kept it a little bit lighter than what I use a lot of the time. Go ahead and move on to the adorable little owl. A lot of these critters I chose to stick with the warm gray color family. Um, that's kind of my comfort zone for critters. I love warm grays. They have a little bit more of that neutral or brown undertone then cool grays which have more of a blue undertone so i like to use these a lot they also pair well with the earth tones if you want to combine some of the earth tones with the warm grays i did stick to warm grays here you can see the colors across the bottom of the screen as well as a little um, yr27 for the beak and then the feet i wanted them to stand out a little bit so i went ahead and colored those in with that same color and I'm simply building up the color on the owl with my warm gray markers. Once I kind of get him the way I want him to look, I did use a little R00 for his cheeks. And I'm gonna use that dot detail where I take the tips of the markers and kind of add little dots to add interest to the design. I really love this for critters. I think it really makes them stand out. Next, I am going to move on and color in the bird, again using a little YR27 for the beak. And then I'm going to use a little yellow, the YR30, and then some blue-greens, blue-green 10, 13, and 09. Again, originally I was only going to use BG10 and blue-gray 13, but I felt like it needed a more depth and dimension, so I pulled in a little blue green 09. 
blend all of these out really well. I even blended a little of the blue green tin into that yellow and then I can kind of smooth it out with my yellow red 30 marker and a little R00 again for the cheeks. I'm going to go ahead and skip back over here to my raccoon. I was a little all over the place with coloring these. I just go where I feel like coloring next. Again, very much sticking to the warm gray color family. Same four colors I used for the owl, but this time I'm going to pull in warm gray seven, which is going to be much deeper and darker and will help highlight the mask and then the rings on the raccoon's tail. Little R00 for the insides of the ears as well as the cheeks. I like to start light and build up the color to dark. That way it's much easier to, to get a little bit darker but you really can't get lighter. So I always like to err on the side of caution and start very light and gradually work my way up. Go back in now and I definitely need to pull in a little bit darker. The, w, the warm gray for just really is going to help add that definition and I can blend it out with warm gray one and zero as needed. And then I want to go back in and add some dot detail with my markers to add that fun interest to the design. I decided to do something different for the bunny. Where I have a lot of warm grays going on, I thought, you know, I think maybe I need to use something in the earth tones color combination. So I tried a different color combination than what I normally use. I used E7174 and 79 for my bunny, and I really actually kind of like how it turned out, especially with the addition of the colorless blender. It's going to remove the color. It's not actually a blender. And so when you add that tip to the design, I like to add those little dots just like I did for my other critters. But this time I'm going to be removing the color with some dots. So I did add some dots with my darker colors, but now I'm taking that colorless blender and just touching it to the paper. And as it is absorbed into the paper, it's lightening some areas and adding some really fun detail to that bunny. I left the tummy area white and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it and I originally put down R00 and I didn't really like that so I'm going to go over it with some warm grays. Kind of build that up. I started with warm gray 00 and then went with warm gray 1 and again going to lighten some areas with that colorless blender. I am going to tape all of my dies from the Woodland Wonders over the stamped images and run those through my Big Shot die cutting machine. I like to use a little post-it tape to hold them in place and die cut as many of the elements as possible with one pass of the machine. So here are all of those critters. I've got a little watercolor cardstock now. I've got one panel that's going to fit behind the Pretty Pink Posh scallop rectangle frame. And then I've got another one that I used these, a stitched borders one die to create a landscape. On my background rectangle, I'm applying some Salty Ocean Distress Ink using an ink blending tool. It's going to be darker near the bottom and get lighter near the top. This is going to be the background sky. I'm using some watercolor cardstock which is much easier to blend the Distress inks than traditional cardstock, I think. Just gives very different results um, depending on what kind of paper you use. On my landscape border here that I die cut with that Pretty Pink Posh Stitched Borders 1 die, I'm applying some Peeled Paint Distress ink. Once I have my ink all over these two pieces, I'm going to take water from a distress sprayer, spritz that over those, let it sit for about 20-30 seconds, and then blot it dry with a paper towel. And it's going to leave that great distressed element to both of these pieces, which I think adds a lot of interest to the design. Here is the frame die that I'm going to be using from Pretty Pink Posh. And I'm going to lay out my elements and see if I like how it all looks together, make sure I'm going to have plenty of room. I'm planning on using the banner and greeting from the Avery L. Woodland Wonders 
collection, so I wanna make sure that's gonna fit. I did stamp that on vellum, heat embossed it with some white embossing powder, and then I will die cut that with a coordinating die. On scenes where there is a lot going on, one of my favorite things to do is to stamp and die cut the greeting from vellum because while it allows you to still add the greeting to the card, you can see through it a little bit. I also decided I wanted some butterflies, so I did stamp and color the cute little butterflies from the Woodland Wonders stamp set there and die cut them with the coordinating dies. Before I attach anything to my card design, I'm going to stamp the little uh, flight trail there using some black ink. So I need to lay everything out, make sure I know where it's all gonna go before I stamp that. I have also die cut three of those scallop rectangle frames. I'm gonna stack them one on top of another to give a little bit of a dimensional frame there. I'll leave my butterfly in place, stamp that other one. Once I have that done, I am ready to put everything together. I'm gonna take a black glaze pen, add detail to the eyes on all of my critters. This is one of those finishing touches that I almost always do. Add some nice detail and really makes the eyes pop. I will even add that to the butterfly bodies. And then I'm going to take my adhesive and start building my scene. So I'm gonna start with the tree. It's gonna be tucked behind that border, so that needs to go on the background first. I can go ahead and sit the cute little owl right on that branch. Add my landscape border next. Take a little zig glue pin and add some dots of glue behind the embossing to kind of hide that adhesive. Tuck that right there underneath the branch and then glue or attach one of the butterflies with a Zotz Bling glue dot and attach my critters along the border. I'm gonna leave the bunny for just a second because I'm not quite sure where I want him to sit yet. And so I'll attach my frames first and then I can attach him. I'm gonna start with one and then I'm just gonna simply draw a line of glue all the way around and adhere them one on top of another. Tuck that bunny, try to figure out the best place to put him. And I'm finally gonna finish the whole card design with a sprinkling of the Pretty Pink Posh Iridescent Mini Heart Confetti. I love this confetti. I think it adds such a fun touch to a card. I trimmed down my card base to five and a quarter inch tall just to trim it a little bit so that it has an equal border all the way around this great framed up scene design. Thanks for watching this video showcasing Pretty Pink Posh dies and Avriel Stamps and Dies. The supplies I've used to create this card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos showcasing Pretty Pink Posh that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.